hello welcome to this module uh, welcome to this module we are looking at the monastery approach to language what you need to know so what are we going to cover in this module we'll look at the scope and sequence for monastery language materials then we'll look at an overview of the different material so uh, what is language now general language are uh, the means of communication between two or more persons so basically we use language to represent our experiences and to also communicate our experiences so what language does for humans is that language helps humans to understand and build their world like my monster who said language is a force our ancestors used to break the chain of the animal instinct so the Montreal classroom and its curriculum for language was built around practical life exercises and sensorial. Now, as a matter of fact, the other subjects are an extension of the practical life exercise. Now, practical life exercise, uh, PLE, practical life exercise also means PLE. So now for us to understand how the child develops its oral language skill, it is important for us to understand lessons in a refinement of the senses and daily life activities now language that accompanies this exercise help the child to organize and hold sensory perception in the mind as a resources for thinking and imagining so language and mathematics were built or developed around p l e or practical life exercise now let's go on to uh, the sensitive period for language yes Montessori also developed sensitive periods for language so what is a sensitive period now a sensitive period is a period a child learns uh, a skill effortlessly now when they do this they don't get tired now what this also mean, means is children go through certain stages in their development that they learn certain things effortlessly now if you look at the sensitive period when, we look at, when you look at the introductory part of this lesson you will see that the, sense, the child is sensitive to language between zero to six years now what this means is that children can learn their mother tongue effortlessly without actively participating they are acquire a language so what children basically do between this period is they acquired language and how you help them to do this is just keep them in an environment where the language of the immediate environment is being spoken now as they live and interact in this environment they learn and acquire language as it is used in context so what we basically say is that follow the child when you follow the child you understand what the child needs part time and how to administer to his needs now one thing you should take note of here is that uh language development for children is intertwined with movement as they begin to walk so as children begin to move their field of activity expands and so does their need for language so dr maram story identifies six specific phases that a child goes through in his or her early development for language and they are from birth to six years, children are sensitive to vocal sounds. And from one and a half to three years, there's often a language explosion. Now, if you observe, you see that it's within this period that children begin to talk. Then from two and a half to three years, children are open to receive the proper names of things. So you have to be careful to tell the child the proper names of things so when the child said tata you don't reinforce tata you tell the child oh water when the child said a name of something in the environment now they use child like um speech to say those things now it is very important that you reinforce the accurate names of things in the environment from three to six years old now this is usually the period for conscious absorbent mind children have an insatiable need to learn new words now this includes scientific terms now i've heard 
parents and teachers argue that ah this was not too big for children no the main aim at this during this period is for them to acquire language not to read or decode language so feel free to give them names of things like temperature stethoscope thermometer monocotyledon dicotyledon and so on and so forth like i said the main aim at this stage is for them to acquire language not to read now as you are doing this you are gradually preparing them for reading and understanding now the next one is from three to four and a half years children begin to write they begin to write now what i mean they begin to write is the uh they begin to the muscles are getting ready to for manipulative tax now we're going to see how you prepare children for this until they get to the point where they begin to to write then i think the last one here is uh, from four and a half to five years, children start to read. Children start to read from four and a half to five years. So let's look at the sensitive, the importance of the sensitive period. I just want you to know the sensitive period, and it's another thing to understand the importance so that we appreciate what these periods are in the life of a child. So one is now. Children are naturally drawn to certain things during their sensitive period. So, when you see that a child is drawn to a, a particular element of the environment, you cannot go on to fashion the environment to have more of this element so that it, it will aid the child to learn and master the skills during the sensitive period. Now, the next one is as a parent, you cannot go on to prepare the environment accordingly to meet the needs of the child so when you notice the child is a sensitive period for uh, learning the names of things you cannot go on to bring in materials and resources that will help the child to learn the proper names of things now i think the last one here now is um it is easier for children to learn uh, certain skills when they are in their sensitive period it is very very easy and you don't spend too much time and energy uh helping a child because it's in that period that they can learn effortlessly then lastly as adults you need to understand that you have no direct influence on the sensitive period so you can make it come earlier or come later they are part of the child's predetermined patterns which you have to observe and aid the child so the next thing we'll be looking at now is the sequence, the scope and sequence of Montessori language. I'm going to explain this as we go on. Now the first one is the preliminary language activities. So under the preliminary language activity, we have the enrichment of vocabulary and we have the language training and the sound games. Then we'll now go on to the pink, blue and green series. So let's start with um, enrichment of vocabulary now enrichment of vocabulary falls under uh, the oral language skills so now the oral language skill like it means is that activities that will help children to acquire and refine their oral language skills now what this basically means that activities that will help children to learn how to talk now one of the activity here is rhymes now it is very important to expose children to rhymes at a very early age. It helps them to acquire words, acquire language, and to also acquire the names of things. So under enrichment of vocabulary, now in this activity, children learn new words on a daily basis through formal lesson. And there's something we call the classified cards now i'm going to be giving us these materials for free after this class now what are the classified cards the classified cards are sets of cards that deals with object in the child's immediate environment so in this lesson all you need to do is you proceed from simple to complex now you bring in cards or materials that are found in the child's immediate environment Another material we have under this enrichment of vocabulary is the nomenclature cards. Now, this is a cards, a collection of cards showing fruits, 
geographical terms, geographic, uh, biological terms, scientific terms, and so on and so forth. So you can have like 200 of these cards per term in your class. Now don't forget the major aim during this period is to help children acquire language and not to read these cards or what is inscribed on them. Now the next one we're going to is language training. Now language training is also known as listening comprehension or word meaning level. Now there's a big challenge you have with children that are learning to read. This is one thing to read. It is another thing to understand what you have read. So when children are engaged in practical life exercise, they get to see acquire language and see how language is used in context. So you learn the meaning of language in context and not in isolation. Now, uh, the initial, now this is the basis, the foundation of reading. When you don't get this uh, preliminary activities right, then the child will struggle throughout the child can read but the, the child cannot understand so in this language uh, training the child experiences a great variety of language experiences it learns through the many forms of literature exercise and self-expression and games to learn the grammar of the language now through both of these group of exercise the child later learning in reading will be facilitated by word by recognition of words now this is the foundation for all other language expressions so what are some of the activities under language training we have telling of stories reading of stories poetry rhymes and jingles songs drama book corner now book corner is not done to start exposing children to reading it's just to create an impression that we can read we read books and other things in the class so you go for spring walk where children will take note of the environment and notes of things in the environment there were act activities of self-expression uh this is this comes in forms of news news time and i'm going to explain this as we go on then we have the event chart we have conversations and we have language game now i'm sure we understood that we understand from number from storytelling story reading poetry rhymes and jingles songs drama book corner now i'm going to explain uh activities of self-expression and one example i gave is the news time what this news time basically does is you just in the morning you have the children sit around you then you tell them is news time what you do basically here is you just tell them your experience from the previous day what happened and what you did then you also encourage them to tell you about their experience the previous day and what they did so the next one is the language games now under the language games we have the question game which has to do with what is when is where is and how is and the question game which is a verb game here you ask students to carry out certain actions so you say the command and you watch them carry out the action like skip please dance please hop clap jump etc then the adjective game is now basically we know what adjective is adjectives are words that describe a noun so what you do is uh, you tell them to bring something for you by adding an adjective like give me a red cap bring that yellow purse bring that fat cat etc now all these are language activities that are done to help children acquire language and most importantly see as language is being used in context now i can really ever emphasize the importance of daily living activities when it comes to helping children acquire language and see how language is being used in context so after these activities the next activity you gradually introduce children to is introduction to writing now mariam Montessori believe that children write before they read i'm going to explain this as we go on so writing basically precedes reading so i was i'm going to expose us now to certain activities that we can carry out to prepare children for writing now like i always said teachers writing is first indirectly then directly now we'll see this as we go on pre-reading and pre-writing skills now Anything that helps the child strengthen the pencil muscles, the muscles used to hold a pencil is very uh, key 
at this stage now during the activities of daily living you see that children engage themselves in carrying out daily living activities and when they do this they refine some of the motor skills they need to uh, write so the first thing you can start doing here now is expose them to activities that will help to refine their fine motor skills and one of them is the knob puzzles or the knob cylinder like we call it we have the using of uh, the pincer tweezer and chopsticks now even eating of food with spoon is another thing that can help children to refine their hands and their fine motor skills then we have the beading exercise the beading exercise now there are so many things this uh, beading exercise does to your child one is uh it helps the child to develop the eye the eye and coordination uh it helps the child to develop patience patience is not something you teach a child it's patience you teach children patience by first modeling it then creating um the environment to help them uh, internalize what patience is so when a child is doing this exercise you also develop patience then the next one is the zipper the buttoning now this also helps the child to uh, refine his motor skills and these are skills that the child will need to hold pencil and begin to write so this activity i just mentioned and many more are the indirect preparation for writing indirect preparation so when children are doing this basically they don't know that you're preparing them for writing but you understand that you need to help them refine their fine motor skills because they are the skills the children would need when it is time to write so like i said writing uh, comes before reading now the process of writing is encoding and if you observe it is much simpler than decoding which is reading now writing is putting together sounds that are known while reading requires the child to take apart the sounds to understand the meaning of someone's thoughts now you can see that out reading is not enough a child should be able to read and also understand what he has read so to write a child simply needs to turn sounds into letters but to read a child needs to take apart the letters turn them into phonetic sounds and put them back together to make a word now children can often write stories using the movable alphabet this is one of the key resources when it comes to reading which we're going to be looking at soon So children who are comfortable with writing will often have an explosion into reading. Now I'm also discovered this when she was interacting with children in Casa de Bambini. Now they get to understand concretely what it means to put together letters together to make a word. So what are some of the materials that we can use to prepare children for uh, writing? The, now this is where we have the direct preparation for writing. Now, one of the first materials you need is a metal inset. The metal inset has 10 um, shapes, the frame and the insets. Now, what are the importance of this metal inset? One, it teaches the child how to hold a pencil properly. Then it goes on to teach the child how to sit correctly when writing. Then it encourages the child to hold the pencil lightly. It helps to strengthen the pencil muscles and it develops muscular memory for the different ways the wrist move when writing now if you look at the shapes they have different curves and patterns now all those curves and patterns are found in the letters of the alphabet so when the child is exposed to these curves and patterns when it's time to write the child has been exposed to all the curves and cap and patterns the movement of the wrist to draw the letters now the next one is the sandpaper letter now the sandpaper letter helps the child to identify the phonetic sounds in graphical forms it is the child the correct writing direction of the letters then it helps the child to develop a muscular memory of each letter now the sandpaper has this rough feel when the child traces the letter the child has a muscular impression of these letters. Now, it is important you take note here that when you are exposing the children to the sandpaper letters, you also give them the phonetic sounds of the letters. When you are exposing children to this, you also expose them to the phonetic sounds. Now, one way we will do this is when we're doing this, we use a three-period 
lesson we use a three period lesson to teach them this this is show me and what is this so this is a this is b this is k then the second period you display the three matter as the child to identify them by saying show me a show me b show me k then the third period is what is this what is this what is this now ensure that as you're doing this the child is tracing the sample paper letter to reinforce uh, the sensory of the letters now the next one is the um, sand tree now here you have the sand tree you know you just get sand wash it and make sure it's safe for the child and put it in the tray now here children get to trace the letter now see they get the sensory impression from the sand paper letter then you have them write it or draw it in the sand tree now when they do these two activities it helps to reinforce the inscriptions of the sounds or the letters and when it's time for them to use pencil to draw them it becomes easier for them to do this so what this sand tree does to the child is one is it helps the child to identify the phonetic sounds in graphical forms it teaches the child the correct writing direction of the letters and it helps develop the muscular memory of each letter So after this now you can now we're now going to introduction to phonics now i always tell teachers that phonics is usually the last thing you teach children because phonics becomes useless when a child does not have a good amount of language now i'm going to explain this the language most the language you want the child to decode is the language the child has acquired so for example if a child has acquired outside you're teaching the child english it's not going to work if a child has acquired english and you want to expose the child to the uh chinese alphabet it's not going to work so when the child has acquired language he know he has he understood how to use language in context then it becomes easier to uh introduce phonics to the child because what phonics basically does is phonics introduces the child to the sounds of the letters the sounds the letters make then phonics also uh meet the needs of the child to be sound conscious before he or she can learn to read or write then and uh, phonics are taught letter sounds are taught in an order that allows the child to use the letters to read and write as soon as possible so uh one way you can help children to do this is like i mentioned earlier when you're exposing them to the sound paper letters you give them the sounds of each sound paper letter and uh, here you can also use the uh, the sound pouches now the sound pouches can contain four to five objects or pictures starting with the same letters so pouch one you can have pictures or objects starting with a ah, apple alligator arrow antelope etc you have them in the same pouch now you now expose them to it bit by bit now one thing i love about introducing children to sounds is the jolly jolly phonics jolly phonics uh is so comprehensive that it engages the whole child it engages the senses engages the muscles and engages the whole body so i want a uh, resource i want to use when you're doing this is use the jolly phonics rhymes and method now this is very very effective when it comes to teaching children sounds remember rhymes yes rhymes that comes with jolly phonics are very very important now let's go on to the next one which is uh the movable alphabets now the movable alphabet is one of the key components when it comes to helping children to read now the the movable alphabet helps children to connect the sounds of the letters with its forms using physical manipulation now uh some persons use the plastic uh, movable alphabets which are supplied by uh, the jolly phonics or you can use the wooden uh material now if you look at this material you see that we have two colors we have blue and we have red now the vowels are blue while the consonants are red now these materials are gradually introduced to the child to help the child to uh familiarize with the graphical symbols and the sounds 
they make. Now, let me quickly summarize. When children have been exposed to language, they've acquired language, then we prepare them to or expose them to the graphical symbols of the language, give them the sounds of the graphical symbols, prepare them to write the graphical symbols, then we gradually move them to uh, reading and writing or writing and reading as the case may be. So now we're going to look at the last two components of the Montessori uh, language for preschool, which is, now we look at the preliminary language activities, now we look at the pink series and the blue series. Now what I will do basically here is just give us an overview of this uh, series. Now what is the pink series? The pink scheme or the pink series is that scheme that introduces children to two or three letter words that are phonetic in nature. Example, uh, cat, k, a, t, hen, h, n, pig, p, e, g. Two letter words that are phonetic, a, s, a, t, e, t, c. Now this is basically what you expose children to in the pink scheme or the pink series. Now what are the, acti uh, the, the scope of activity under this scheme? The first one is we have the object and LME. We have object and name tags. We have picture and LME. The LME is large movable alphabet. Then we have picture and name tag. We have sheet of pictures and cards. We have the word list. We have booklets. And we have the sentence cards. Now, if you look at what we have here, reading is not, uh, children don't write at this stage. What this means is that children are engaged in other activities that prepare them for writing. Now, naturally, children get to a point where they begin to write, even without you telling them. In fact, as a matter of fact, they start showing interest that I want to write, I want to write, I want to write. So when you do these things and do them very well, you discover that children naturally progress to writing. When you do the indirect activity, you do the direct activity, and you es gradually expose them to this. Now, the next one we're going to be looking at is the blue scheme or the blue series. What is the blue series? The blue scheme is asking to introduce children to words that, are, that fulfill the following condition. Now, the first condition is that the words must have at least three letters it must have at least one consonant blend at the beginning or end now if the consonant blends are removed the other letters must uh, be phonetically pronounced or sounded so the last thing we're looking at in this uh, model is like i said is just is just an overview it's not an in-depth uh, introduction to this model we have the three parts cards what are the three parts cards now the three parts cards are cards that are used to introduce children to reading now these cards can be used for the reading and non-reading child i'll take it again they can be used for the reading and non-reading child what it means is that it can be used for the child that can read and for the child that cannot read now like the, the name implies the card contains three parts the first part is you have only the cards without a name only picture without a name then the second part is which we call the control cards has the picture and the name then the third part is the name sleep so for the child that cannot read what they are expected to do here is to match the card without the name and the control cards for the child that can read the child match match the 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 card without the name and the name tag or the name slip then he uses the control card to check if what he has done is correct or not now initially the child will match the pictures then the child will go on for the non-reader will match the 